So what happens when we put modes together? Well, behind it all is, of course, um, the notion of communication. I want to communicate something to you. Um, I want to have, I have a meaning which I want you to get in some way. Um, I have the sense that uh, one mode alone won't do it. Um, so I put modes together because I have a sense that this mode will allow me to do this kind of thing best and this mode will allow me to do this other thing best. So for instance, on this um, website that we have here, I can click on a particular thing and what I have is something which is in time. There's a, a mode of moving image or a little video which is moving image and it's speech um, together. These things are in time. But at the same time, I have things which are not in time, bits of writing. So I have um, things which are not in time and things which are uh, temporally instantiated. I have an image, a still image, mm -hmm. which is spatial. Um, so because I want to say things which are about uh, things which are in time, they move, things which are not in time, they're stationary, things which are spatially kind of displayed like images, I want to put all these together um, because of the meaning that I want to make. Um, so I have a sense of what these things do, I have a sense of what I want to mean, and so I have a, a kind of an interest to make a composition in which certain kinds of things come together um, in a particular way that best exemplifies or communicates what I want to mean. Okay. So these modes are kind of arranged according to the interest I have as the person communicates, um, but also my sense of who you are and what be, might, might be most interesting, most readily um, memorable, yeah, but most pleasurable, mm -hmm. most informative uh, for you. So these, these things are sort of set in a communicational frame. So you seem to suggest that different modes can do different kinds of things. Yes, and I suggested in part that it's me who c makes the decision about which mode to use. There is also, of course, around me a sort of conventional notion. I uh, said, so for instance, if I'm kind of communicating something very formally, then writing might seem to be, because my society tells me, mm -hmm. the best means for doing that. It seems that we have um, in our society not just these modes available to use, but also conventions um, that indicate to us, not as strict rules, nobody's going to get shot, mm -hmm. but as rules, uh, conventions, to use them in particular ways. And so we might say that writing over many hundreds of years in literate societies mm -hmm. has become specialized um, to be the carrier of certain kinds of information. There's a functional specialization of writing. Um, and also, also, of course, then what happens is that writing in that past, which is now changing very mm -hmm. rapidly, um, carried most of the informational load. So we can, we can ask in a particular on this website um, which mode is carrying most informational load? So if we look at this BBC News website, yeah. we can talk about which of the different modes has the most functional specialization or functional load? Which We can say which mode has been specialized for what kinds of purposes. Okay. Yeah, so the writing next to the image um, seems to be specialized to kind of make certain kinds of things in the image um, seem more salient. Mm -hmm. Um, or to give a context, a frame for what this image actually is. That seems to be uh, what writing is doing here. Mm -hmm. That's its specialization. Now the question is, which of them carries more informational load? Um, and I would find that actually quite difficult to answer mm -hmm. because writing kind of frames, it provides an environment, it provides a kind of a, a background to the image, mm -hmm. but the image seems most potent. And then they're also organized in a kind of a left-right relationship. Yeah, the image is on the left and the writing is on the right. Um, so I'm asking myself, does that matter? And would it matter if the writing was on the left and the image on the right? Now these are the kinds of questions we now have to begin to think about because we're making a composition in which everything that is there ought to be where it should be mm. in terms of uh, the meanings I want to make. Mm. So is this what we mean by layout then? In relation to um, the module we're just looking at, we're looking at a module here of image and writing. Um, on the website, it's quite near the top, and it's um, on the, if this was sort of seen as two columns, really, 
it's in the left column. Um, that has a particular place there. Seemingly, um, if you kind of look at the website, um, you might come to that first, especially if you scroll down. Mm -hmm. You don't have to scroll down in order to see that. Mm -hmm. So something about the space has been used to make that most prominent. Mm -hmm. It's what you come to first after you've got the BBC band cut at the top. It's first, it's on the left. In the West, we're trained to read from the left to the right, so we look there first. It's most prominent. Um, layout, the possibility of putting things in space in a meaningful way, has been used to make us attend to that before we attend to other kinds of things. We don't have to scroll down. Um, it's kind of prominently there. That's what we mean by layout. Mm. Is this uh, related to, term, uh, to if we talk about ordering? Um, absolutely. Uh, for instance, on this website, as you can see, there's a, 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 a smaller module opposite in the right column yeah. um, where this uh, particular module about the soldiers and the t tank and the war in Afghanistan are. Um, a smaller um, kind of thing. Um, and somehow, um, if you now imagined this smaller element being on the left mm -hmm. and the module about the war in Afghanistan being on the right, intuitively might think it would look unbalanced. It would, it would seem kind of odd. It wouldn't seem quite right. So there is a kind of thing about ordering which might be both about significance, it might be about um, a sort of a, a sense of a proper composition in which things should be kind of balanced in, in terms of a visual kind of um, ordering of them. Um, and yes, that's what or ordering is about. But also the fact that as you scroll down, other things appear somebody has thought things which are less in importance can be lower in, the, in terms of uh, scrolling down on the website. So uh, the things which you mentioned earlier, the word um, salient, so what they have assumed being more salient will be, for example, on the left top side. I would say so, yeah. yeah. So in the module, the tank is on the left, the writing is on the right. Mm -hmm. In these two columns, the uh, item on the war in Afghanistan is on the left, and the other item, which I can't quite see what it's about, <laughs> it's uh, trailing something in some other bit of program, mm. um, is on, on the right-hand side. So there is a, a kind of a sense of um, which are the more significant um, spaces um, on that screen. On that screen. Um, in linguistics, we're used to mm. talking about coherence and cohesion mm. in a text. Mm -hmm. How can we use those terms when we're talking about multimodality? The way that, um, in my own understanding of, of linguistics, that's been used is that cohesion um, tells you about the devices you use for making something coherent. And I think you can use that much in the same way here. Um, you get a sense, for instance, if um, this screen was arranged in such a way that you say, sometimes what's most, what seems to be most important is on the right, sometimes what's most important is on the left, um, that would produce a sense of lack of coherence. Uh, the cohesive device of ordering in space uh, would have been not really fully used. But also, if for instance um, you had a color scheme here where the kind of, I don't know what you ca call the BBC red there, a moroni sort of um, red. Banner. <laughs> Ban banner. In that banner. Um, if that color, um, it could be matched by other kinds of reds or pinks mm. or greens or blues. Um, so then the sense of coherence of the page would be destroyed um, by a kind of an inconsiderate use of um, the mode of color. Mm. Yeah, so there are devices here that produce um, the sense of, yes, this belongs here. It is where it ought to be. Mm. And this is where it ought to be. And they are of various kinds. It's positioning. It's, um, there is something coherent about the color that uh, occurs here. The, the color in the image of the tank isn't out of place in relation to the maroon of the banner of the, the yeah. So I think one can transfer the notion of um, cohesive devices. What are the means of making something coherent? Mm -hmm. And the notion of it is coherent, it makes sense from the linguistic or from other things mm -hmm. um, to this. Um, but we would have to sort of um, say it's no longer about sentences in sequence or elements of sentences, which mm -hmm. kind of link across uh, from sentence to sentence. Um, but it's diff different kinds of things. For instance, in linguistics, nobody would think about color mm. as being a means for making something coherent. Mm. 